Hi, this is Eric Bjornstedt again with Bell Performance. Bell Performance, we've been in business for 104 years, and we are in the business right now of saving you money and making your life easier. And that's whether you are a consumer who drives a car, or in the case of this video blog, we're going to be talking to industry professionals. We're going to be talking about, or talking to, uh, those of you out there who have heavy equipment and you use grease. Heavy equipment, very expensive. You use grease as an essential part of the functioning of your business process or your manufacturing process because you need the grease that you use in the essential parts of the equipment. You need it to perform the job that it was designed to do. You need it to, perf it to perform well because if it does not, it's going to end up costing you a lot of money. So... Specifically, what we're going to talk about is high temperature grease. There are some applications out there. For example, you have one, you're lubricating uh, uh, wheel bearings. Your temperature might get up to 250, 300 degrees. There's a lot of greases that can handle that. But let's say you're in, let's say, some kind of, of, of a conveyor uh, where you have drying ovens, you have rollers that are rolling, and the temperatures there are exceeding 400 degrees. You need a high temperature grease and you need a high temperature grease that is going to perform well at those temperatures. How do you select a good one? Well, there are a lot of things to consider. You talk to a lubricant professional, he's going to start rattling off a number of properties and there's just so many things to consider here. You need to consider uh, the, the base oil that that grease is constructed from. Remember that a grease is essentially, it's, it's base oil, lubricating oil, and it's held within a mesh, or what they call a soap complex of, of, of a thickener, basically. So for grease, think of grease as oil that's held within the framework of a sponge. You squeeze the sponge, the oil comes out, helps to lubricate. That's basically, very simply, how grease works. Uh, for a high temperature application, you need that, that oil to be a good quality oil that will hold up under those high temperatures. And you need the thickener complex, whether it's a lithium complex or a calcium complex. There's a number of different kinds. Uh, molybdenum. You need that to be able to hold up well. Uh, you need to determine uh, whether that grease, you need that grease to be resistive to what they call oxidative as well as thermal shear or thermal wear. You know, uh, there are a number of things that cause a grease to break down. As it gets exposed to oxygen during the business process, that oxygen starts to act upon that grease and it starts to cause what they call oxidative breakdown. Uh, depending on your business process, you probably will need a grease that is well resistant to that. Um, the shear breakdown relates to how well that grease holds up as it's being rubbed in between two metal surfaces. The shear. Shear is a physical or a physics term related to pressure going off in one direction. Now, I'm sure that the physics majors out there will correct me, but that's kind of a good way to explain it to the average person. So, um, you also need to keep in mind what kind of additives are added to that grease. Um, take a grease like Bell Performance's Extra Lube Grease. We make, the, we make a grease with primarily a lithium com soap complex thickener. That's the classification that it is. But then we add uh, our MBL uh, lubricating complex. And the MBL complex contains uh, micrometallics that actually bond into the metal and they stay there no matter what, whether you've got a 500 degree or 600 degree temperature or whatever, they're not affected by high temperature applications and so they provide this, this residual lubrication even after the temperature goes so high that the oil that the, the soap complex breaks down and, and the oil may even burn off, but the MBL complex in the Bell product is still there working and still providing lubrication uh, and protection for their surfaces. So, bottom line, how do you know how to select a good high temperature grease? First, what temperature range do you need to use it at? Make sure that it's compatible for that. Uh, is your grease, do you need continual, do you need to be continually lubricating or is your gre are your grease needs more intermittent, intermittent, excuse me. If it's continual, you need a, a, what they call a top tier product that meets the operational requirements for your machine. Um, do you have heating and cooling cycles that affect it? You know, 
Uh, if you do, you can get moisture that comes in, and you're going to want a grease that is resistant to the, the effects that that moisture would have on ordinary greases. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, one thing that many people don't consider is, uh, is it possible that in your application, do you have an application where if some of that grease were to drip out of where you're using it, would that cause a problem? You know, is there a comedic, uh, excuse me, a cosmetic factor to consider? So, uh, if you'd like more information on these, we wrote a great uh, blog article at the Bell Blog saying selecting a high temperature grease, what to look for. We also have other resources on both bellperformance.com and also on our educational site, wefixfuel.com. So feel free to check them out. Again, this has been Eric Bjornstad with Bell Performance. Thanks very much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.